Hello, this is Romeo Cap Computers, and today I'm already upgrading this new computer I built. This is the third video in the series in which I'm doing stuff with my new computer. You may be wondering, well, gee, you just got the new computer, why are you already upgrading it? Well, I bought some new parts because I'm building my brother a new computer, and that will be part four, actually, building him a new computer. Now, I'm building it very similar to how I built this one right here. Um, in fact, the motherboard that I'm putting in his is exactly the same as what I have in this computer. What I did was I went to eBay and I bought a few things. I got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super, a Ryzen 7 1800X. It's in this little case right here. And unrelated to my brother's computer project, I went and bought some RAM because this Vengeance Pro stuff has gotten cheap. So I'll be filling in two more slots there. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting this slightly higher spec hardware in this computer. And I'll be putting this stuff in his computer. This is a 1650 Super and that's a Ryzen 5. So anyway, before I do that, I'm going to run some benchmarks on the current system. You see, the thing is, in the last video, I kind of wanted to include some performance aspects of this new computer but it was getting long and I had to get on with my life. So I figured I'd make it a part three. So in this video I'm gonna be running a CPU test, a GPU test, and I'll also be testing some stuff in Minecraft. Then I'm going to install the upgrades, and then I'm going to run all the tests again and see not only what the upgrades have caused, but also if it was a very significant upgrade. Whether it is or not, I'm going to be keeping this stuff in my computer. So. Let's get on with running these benchmarks. First, the CPU test. I suppose I could get OBS, but nah, I don't care. You can see what's on the screen. This is going to be Geekbench 5, which tests a lot of different things on the CPU, or rather, it uses a bunch of tests to determine the CPU's performance. And I'll scroll through all of them, but it'll give an overall score, and that's what I'll be using for the overall test. So. All I have to do is type in Geekbench 5 on the directory at which it is located. Oh, that's not it. Alright, I've got the right one this time. Oh my gosh. There we go. Yeah, I'm not much of a Linux user, if you can't tell. And here's the final result. And with Geekbench 5, you have to open it as a link. There we go. A single core score of 743, a multi core score of 5,238. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at any of these statistics, but it's probably not all that important. All right, next for graphics, we have a GL Mark II which I suppose is more geared towards uh, 3D graphics rather than everything that the graphics card can do, but that's most applicable. Alright, so here's the final result, and it looks like my GL Mark II score is 3,314. Which, if you look at all the data here with the average frame rates, uh, that looks like just an overall average of all frame rates, so I don't know, but that's the score. Now let's move on to Minecraft. Alright, so to start, I'm just going to see how long it takes between clicking the play button and getting to the title screen, and I'll be measuring this in time, so I'll use a stopwatch. And go. Alright, I'm calling it there. 17 seconds. 
All right, so similar, I'm going to create a new world. And I'm going to see how long it takes to generate with the stopwatch. So I'm just going to leave this all default. I'll put this on creative. That'll be useful later. And one, two, three, go. All right, 29, pretty much 30 seconds. And I'm going to do this again just because, you know, generation is random. So I'll average the time out in the end. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep an eye on the frame rate and just see how that is. And hopefully with a slightly better graphics card, a slightly better CPU should improve later. So right now, I'm sitting at 75, and it's probably going to try to keep that that way. I've, I've set it to uh, 12 chunks render distance and unlimited FPS. So here I'm going to move around. Stutters a bit, but it's staying pretty consistent. Thing. Very consistent, 70, oh, there we go, it dropped a bit. I was definitely kind of expecting a bit more, but not really sure. This is staying at a, uh, a steady 60 to 75. It doesn't seem to want to go past 75. First, I'll stick the RAM in because that will be the simplest. All right, now for the graphics card. And it's got the same connectors as what's already on there, so I don't need to get any other adapters for my VGA monitor other than the one that's already there. Um, and I did notice that, if I can find it, where is it? Power connector uses eight pins. The power connector on there uses six, but I have an eight pin connector, so there's two pins here that are just sticking out. So I guess maybe this requires more power, but luckily I do have the right connector for it. been here a little while and it's already got a bunch of dust on it. Here it is compared to the other one. Well, the camera being in the way was too annoying, so I went and installed the CPU, the Ryzen 7. Came with this little sticker. It's got some Chinese characters on it. I mean, it makes sense. I got the CPU used on eBay from China. I don't know if this is a genuine sticker or if it's a fake reprint. But whatever it is, I'm going to stick it on my computer. Alright, there we go. Everything's installed. I'm going to turn it on. Let's hope it doesn't explode on the first try. Well, already... Oh, there we go. For a second, I thought the RAM wasn't working. But it's definitely lighting up. Let's see what's going on over here. Well, currently, I'm not getting any video output, which is not a good sign. Oh, all it needed was a bit of patience. Alright, so it's detected the 32 mega or gigabytes of RAM. New CPU installed. I guess let's run the setup. Oh, F1. Yeah, this all seems to be correct. Well, no, the date's wrong, or the time's wrong, but. Anyway, let's just boot the computer and see how it goes. Alright, it works. Now for testing. Yeah, there we go. It's detecting all uh, 8 cores and 16 threads and the 32 gigabytes of RAM. 
All right, first geek bench. All right, so here's the final score, and I'll show all the results at the end, but for now I'll tell you that that's already better than the last CPU. Feel free to pause and look at these individually if you want to. All right, now for GL Mark. All right, and there's my final score, 10,533. All right, now for Minecraft. First, we'll start with the play button. Alright, it was slightly faster that time. Alright, generating a random world. 22, 37. Alright, so I ran the test two more times just to be sure and I'll have an average time at the end. Now for frame rate. Just keep in mind it's right there. Yeah. Oh, it's not even pointing that way. There's a the frame rate. And so far, it looks uh, very similar to how it was before. Although, if you remember last time, it was jumping down into the upper 60s uh, when things started moving a lot. But here, it's staying very consistent between 70 and 75. I even saw it go up to 76 there for a second. Uh, well, that's not good. Oh, I must have accidentally hit a key combination. No, it just nuked itself. Yeah, it's probably nothing important. Anyway, so here I am back in the world, and I guess after that reset, I'm back where I was standing originally, but... Hopefully that's just a one-time thing. Anyway, yeah, so very consistent. I just saw it drop to 68 for a split second. Uh, wonder if maybe I didn't put enough thermal paste or something, but I'm not sure. I'll find out. So before I end the video, I'm going to go over to this village and see what's going on. Well, anyway, I think I'm going to call it that for this test here. I'd say even though the frames per second is still pretty much stuck at 75 and no higher, it's more consistent than it was before. Alright, so here's the results. Geekbench 5 tells me that there is a significant performance increase in both single core and multi core performance. As for GL Mark II, the new graphics card definitely helped as it went from 3,314 to a score of 10,533. And for Minecraft, uh, loading the game up from the launcher didn't really take all that much more time on the older computer, but generating new worlds was faster on the newer configuration by a little bit. And finally, for frame rate, once I'm in the game, both with identical video settings, they both pretty much stayed at 75 frames per second, not really wanting to exceed that amount, but the new configuration with the 1660 and the Ryzen 7 did keep a more consistent frame rate. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, so I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.